topic for the today is uh, testing the professor's plan and we'll try to get some lessons of test design from money heist uh, the series that actually was not so successful when it first launched uh, but when it came to netflix it become a sensation over the world uh, and i think that's one of the reason why i was binge watching it uh, when it launched and uh, i was i was a fan up till i would i would say for season 4 uh, after season 5 it just uh, i just dwindled the interest but keeping that aside uh, uh, let's let's jump it in uh, a bit about me um i am gunesh patil i am lead estet at asher um, we are a customer experience automation company uh, we have our engineering division in bangalore here we are headquartered in santa clara i am also founder and podcast host at liberated tester so yeah let's um, yeah before we start uh, this is going to be a very gif centric uh, session so if you like gifs and uh, i i feel gif um, give the message much more uh, eminently and it connects you to the memory where you actually had that gif watch for the first time so yeah like like um, the opening of the money heist right uh, when they actually opened those gates they were all all ready or they knew what is going to come what is going to come what they have to do and they had everything planned so it's very similar to what we observe in our day to day lives right like we we have our application we have uh, the scope that is there and now when you have to get started you need that design to be really perfect so that your plan works uh, basically your testing works so knowing your application is one of the first things i think uh, that money has teaches us uh, they knew their plan to the last bit uh, they had planned everything they knew every detail of that royal mint and the bank that they looted so when uh, the police inspector actually um, was talking to the professor she asked like how long did it take to study every move that we are making so consider this as the customer or um, any other person who is using your application and the response that professor gave that time he said to be honest half of my life if you if somebody comes and tests me this in the in the testing planning or anything i would say what are you drinking it's it's not how it works we work in, we work in sprints okay we don't have that much of time so to know the application better what are some of the things that we can actually implement so i'll give you a few pointers on that so to get to know your application better i think you should start talking to people mainly the system architecture team and yeah don't be the girl which is in the gif um talk to the system architecture team talk to the people around you they know the system slightly better than you might do so talk to them get to know the system once you get to know the system try to trace a particular flow through the system understand the data the data flows like the pacman so you need to trace all the corners to get all the points right so that's that's how our systems also work and once you have understood those data flows and all you will also come across your interfaces and by the way, matrix matrix is my like the most favorite movie so this could not do without it but yeah um i keep slipping into movies sorry about that um so yeah understand your interfaces and once you have understood your interfaces you would be able to keep fighting like neo right uh, even without looking at the code so you would be able to test the application without even looking at what's happening that's that's how proficient you'll become and knowing how your customer is using your system will also help you understand your application much much better and once you understand that then you can keep um, those lessons or those notes uh, and get back to your test design and design your test which will help you get much better at test design the second point that we can learn from money heist is focus on what's necessary there are tons of things which are happening in that particular um, setup there is uh, police coming in there is swat coming in there's a lot of things which are happening there's explosion here snipers there but they had their one motive that they want to get the gold out of that mint so for that they needed to focus on what's really necessary their one goal which was the gold and how how to focus on what's necessary in our day to day lives is we need to have some rules in place i i know nobody wants to follow the rules but they are important so have a charter for your team have have a set of guidelines if not rules set of guidelines which can help you uh, when you start test designing um, for example 
let's say one crux of the feature is really important. So you say, okay, we will focus on 100% coverage of this one feature in this sprint. So make a charter, like for a sprint, we'll focus on one particular feature and then we'll just go full speed on it and then we'll do the 100% coverage on it and explore the ways which work for your team. Whatever you um, might have read, you might have listened, may not work for your team. Um, get to know your team and see which ways work for you, basically, uh, to have this focus. Also, there is something called risk-based testing, which has been around for quite some time. This will also help you design your test much better because once, um, once these... Um, risks are evaluated, you know, which functionalities are really, really important. And if they fail, then the application is done. So you don't want to get into that phase. So evaluate your risk, evaluate the functionalities which are there, and then start designing from that knowledge. And also whatever we learned from the previous stage, uh, from knowing your application, you can also implement that in the learnings into focusing on what's really necessary. And after focusing on what's necessary, I think next comes is keeping an overwatch. So if you might have seen, um, a professor had a lot of um, outside help in keeping uh, an overwatch on the team, on the police, what they're doing, what's happening. So they had they had few people here and there who were keeping them informed on what's really happening with the police, what moves they're making. So it does not really translate to something uh, very similar, but how you cannot lose track of important things is there are a lot of messages and emails and slags and DMs are coming through all the day. So how, how you can really keep, um, keep the important things in place. So you can enable notifications for very specific channels, and you can also keep muting the distracting channels like random and some reports which are coming from Jenkins and all these things, unless you are really responsible for it. But, um, mute those distracting channels and focus on the important things. And when we are looking from like the test design point of view, there are a lot of things which are happening in your area, which might impact what you're doing now or what you're designing it for. So add yourself as a watcher on the Jira issues so that you keep getting those um, uh, notifications important to your work or which might impact your work. So for example, let's say you are doing uh, for one interface or one API and they are already uh, designing a second version or some um, new method on that particular API. So keep a, keep a watch on that ticket which is happening. So it might come to sprints, three sprints down the line, but you'll keep getting the update. So you, you are not surprised or you'll not get a call at 2 a.m. saying, oh, this broke and you are the responsible tester. So don't do that. And pay attention in backlog refinement sessions because they, they, they are really import, important. So whatever discussion that happens, it might give you some more cases to actually explore that functionality. People might also come up with um, some new ways or some new inputs for a specific functionality, which you might not have uh, really taken into account. So also pay attention in those refinement sessions or the grooming sessions or requirement gathering sessions, whatever is applicable in your context, keep, uh, keep an eye on that and keep listening to it. And once you are focused, once you have all these important things uh, chalked up, I think next one is keep planning one step ahead of whatever you're doing. And if you, if you have seen the, the whole series, the professor has not only dotted it till the last point, but he also has a contingency plans in place for everything which was there. Though there were some surprises, but he had, he had covered it really well. And I think that's, that's what we are looking for in terms of test coverage also. Um, so how to plan one step ahead, basically. So when, when you have any production issues or anything doing retro for this customer escalations or, uh, actually looking into the customer communication, which happened at back of it, which will give you a lot of insights and how your design process is and how maybe you can improve it or what were the things you missed. So document and fill those process gaps and don't forget to go back and add test for the defect, which was found. So once, once you have that, then after this, I think also attend webinars and talks and ask me anything sessions, which are ongoing in the community so that you will have a lot of, um, you will have a lot of good, um, resources at your uh, disposal and you will get to know how people are actually 
uh, working in their own style, how they are implementing test design or any part of test process in their setup. Their setup might not be equally same to you, but there is always an overlap of 50-60%, which will save you the effort of actually thinking that much and actually using your brain to do some important tasks. Also, get involved in the local meetups. Um, I, I found uh, meetups which are happening in Bangalore really, really interesting. And you meet a lot of people. I, I also met a couple of students the other day. They, they give you a different aspect on how, how you knew things or how you may have perceived things. And these everything of your thought process is going to help you in designing better tests. And once, once you have all this planning done, I think uh, the next one, the next lesson is more for the leaders of the team or for the people who are kind of leading in the positions. Just believe in your team. Once you have given these tools and uh, things at their disposal, I think you should keep believing in your team because there were a lot of instances in this um, Money Heist series where you might think that they have completely lost it. But then there was something which they came up with and boom, I mean, it's just turned the tables. So uh, they they were at like very low and then suddenly they were overpowering the team which was coming in. Um, so to help you do that, what I think uh, there are some of the things that you might consider are connect your team to a better cause or a major cause. Um, just completing a sprint or just completing a test plan or just completing an execution, uh, it, it doesn't give that much excitement. So maybe uh, maybe think of something like Let's have lowest effect in production for this release or maybe come up with the best coverage or the techniques that we can do for the stories which are there in this sprint or this release, whatever you're working with. So once people have that uh, higher cause, they have better motivation to come together and work as a team. And once you have that set, then I think I think uh, just have to let them roll. I think they'll just do the job. Uh, knowing everyone's strengths and playing by them, it's very crucial. Um, also, in test design, not everyone might uh, have worked with uh, all sorts of test design techniques which are available right now in the market. Like if you see in the GIF, every one of them have their own tools and they are very, very good at using them. Maybe Iron Man suit, the Thor's hammer, uh, Hulk uh, is a machine in itself. So these are some of the things which you have to look out in the team where people have their own strengths and you can also consider pairing them together. So they might work better in the team, uh, in the pairing. So they might learn from each other uh, from that. And because you are in a leading position, you have that kind of experience. You might know when people are going to face issues or when people are going to run into some difficulties anticipate those better and maybe keep some advice or the solutions handy so that you can keep uh, uh, tell people or maybe use your resources use your connections um, that you have built over the time and try to find a solution for it and i think the last one is as a leader you're always responsible for all the decisions that are happening and when you're making those decisions maybe uh, be more open to the thoughts from others also, know that people are counting on you and then do everything in your power to actually fill those shoes and be a responsible leader. Uh, I think that's one of the things that I really like from the series as well because Professor, he he might not have solution to everything, but he knew that the team that he assembled was really good uh, working as a team. So to put that back into the context of test design, I think once you have uh, given people the tools, the motive and the cause, I think you should just let them work on their own and then uh, see the output at the end of the sim. If you don't have then uh, the same output that you wanted, then maybe do another retro, try to find. There, there's, I mean, it takes a bit of time to gel together a team which is working really well in the unison, right? So... Uh, I think that's that was the that was the last one that I had to share you with. Um, I'm going to keep it short. I think this might be the last slide as well. Oh yes, so thank you, thank you so much. Uh, this was wonderful uh, talking at uh, QA Touch uh, Global Tester Summit. If you want to find me or know more about Liberated Tester, the QR codes on the screen will help you navigate uh, to that um, 
to, to those pages.